desulfonation of indigo and the chemical traffic light. Attention! Sulfuric acid and sodium hydroxide can cause severe chemical burns on the skin and eyes. I don't take any responsibility for damage done to persons or property caused by the recreation of this experiment. Indigo is a blue dye that is known for being completely insoluble in water. Nevertheless, by reacting it with a strong reducing agent it can be dissolved, which is used in vat dyeing. A related soluble substance is indigo carmine, which has a lot of applications. It can be seen that both compounds only differ due to the sulfonic acid functional groups. This is why it can be assumed that indigo carmine can be prepared by the sulfonation of indigo. Usually, sulfur trioxide is used in the sulfonation, but in this case, it is not needed. For the experiment, about 40 mg of indigo were weighed out. 20 mg would be better. The scale was only able to weigh out up to a tenth of a gram, so a spatula tip of indigo could also be used. Then 0.5 grams of sulfuric acid were added. Even at room temperature, the indigo reacts slowly with the acid. To speed up the reaction, the beaker is then placed on a hot plate and heated up to 75 degrees C for about 10 minutes. It should be taken care that the indigo is mixed completely with the acid. Sulfuric acid is able to react with itself in an equilibrium reaction. This is called autoprotolysis, which can be used to sulfonate some substances even without sulfur trioxide, as for example indigo. Due to the sulfonation, indigo carmine should form. In the 10 minutes when the sulfonation takes place, 7 grams of glucose were dissolved in 155 milliliters of distilled water. In addition to that, in a 300 milliliter Erlenmeyer flask, 5 grams of sodium hydroxide were dissolved in 50 milliliters of distilled water. After 10 minutes, the mixture had turned blue and was removed from the hot plate. Then the well-known rule was broken because 20 milliliters of distilled water were added to the cooled down mixture of indigo and sulfuric acid. Due to the small scale nothing should happen, but it should still be taken care. As it can be seen the indigo was now water soluble, which is a sign that the sulfonation was successful. The indigo carmine solution was then added to the glucose solution, where it will be seen later that only half of it would have been enough. Then a stirring bar was added and the new solution was heated up to around 30 degrees C while stirring. After the temperature had been reached, the beaker was removed from the hot plate. Then the indigo common solution was added to the Erlenmeyer flask where it shouldn't be forgotten to remove the steering bar. Next the flask was closed and left to sit until the solution changed its color completely to yellow. The glucose is a reducing sugar, so it can reduce the indigo carmine in alkaline conditions to its leuco form. When the flask is shaken, oxygen gets into the solution, oxidizing most of the indigo carmine. A part is always being present in the yellow leuco form, so blue and yellow cause the solution to look green. After that the indigo carmine is reduced again. The intensity of the color was a bit too strong so there was too much of the dye in the solution. So it was diluted by a ratio of 1 to 1 which gave the desired effect. The red color is due to a radical anion forming between the completely oxidized and reduced states.
This is then reduced to the leuco form. This was the sulfonation of indigo and the chemical traffic light. I hope you enjoyed. Please rate and comment. If you want to know how indigo is synthesized, you can watch my video about it here, or you can watch my latest video here.